All right, so <clears throat> we talked about constructors and destructors. We created a name or thingy over here and went through all the things that a name could do. We created um, some setters and getters and display and read and all those good stuff. Um, in utils, uh, we have we, we we have the get string and we created allo copy to the allocation and copying automatically and in the other class somebody asked me something and we changed the SDR copy to a nicer version so I'm gonna add that one over there you know that in uh, C string we have um, SDR copy and then we have strn copy so strn copy's job is essentially to uh, um, copy up to certain number of characters if possible uh, do we know that we know that right strn copy yeah but after strn copy you have to song joe you said you don't know strn copy oh basically sorry oh misclick yeah so so the strn copy that's what it is it's that's what it is um but the problem with strn copy is it's not problem actually it's created on purpose that way but it doesn't not terminate if it hits the limit that it's supposed to copy so to fix that problem um, they suggested having uh, another function and i said why don't we just add a default argument to this one and have a length and set it to an impossible value so if they don't provide it i have some impo impossible value to to detect to make sure that i'm not going to check for length and if actually a value comes in then i can actually check for length length and and do what i need to do so uh, obviously this is the definition of the thing i'm not going to put it over here i'm going to put it in a prototype over here which is right over here so integer len minus one so now that sdr copy of mine over here you will act like sdr n copy only if the condition over here is properly set so for this i'm going to use the concept uh the the um, uh, uh, features of uh, and and or and we know that the ineffective operand in an and operation is always true when i say ineffective it means if i write over here and true it does not make any difference to this condition it it remains the same are we okay with this all right so i need to have a true condition if len is less than zero so i'll put that one over here so in here i'm going to say if len is less than zero this is going to get true now i have to add the other condition over here to actually check for the length so i, I need to Please mute Can yourself, Abbas. Will please new mute yourself when you log in. All right. So I say len less than zero, and I want to now check for len actually being less than, uh, sorry, i to be less than length to not to copy more characters than than len is setting if the value is greater than uh, if greater than or equal greater than zero. So what I will do over here is simply put an OR condition in here. So what happens, this OR over here will be this, essentially. So it says, if len is less than zero, the condition becomes completely true because true and any condition is true. So if this is true, if this is true, then the whole parentheses will be true because true or anything is true and then this true will be ineffective for and because true and anything doesn't make any difference it just the condition remains the same so that's what i'm gonna do <coughs> so i'm gonna put over here len if len is less than zero that's what's gonna happen but if less than is greater than zero then this or over here will this actually becomes false and to actually determine if this is a true or false now i less than len should kick in therefore this function will actually test for the length and there is our sdr len in here are we okay with this because i thought it was a cool thing and the fact that we don't need to write an sdr n copy anymore uh 
that's what I did it but this does not work like SDR n copy remember that if it has three SDR n copy does not null turn if I ter null terminate if it hits the null <coughs> if it hits the length remember that but this one always null terminates all right so that's that one now um, now that we have the length set with getting set and all the good stuff let's go and apply the constructors to our employee and company so employee by itself doesn't have any dynamic memory allocation of any kind so um, constructor destructor there is nothing needed over here the only thing is this name that I want to check change so in here I'm gonna include the name dot H and obviously instead of this name thingy being an array I'm gonna still call it the same thing but it's gonna be an object of type name so therefore M name is an object that dynamically takes care of everything that it has and it's gonna be defaulted by this universal way of defaulting and because we have a default constructor no argument constructor for the name universal defaulting for that will work and it's gonna actually nullify and create an empty name over there if you want to and then we have higher end display so we're gonna go and see what we can do over there so I'm gonna go to the employee.cpp and take a look at higher and the thing so the higher over here is actually getting a name and sets the name and the salary so for that I'm not gonna bother myself anymore here I actually created a, a read for that so I'm gonna say I'm name just read and that's gonna do it for me I don't need to worry about it and in here when I'm displaying the name I could either call the display of the name or I can just put over here dot get and get the name out and be done with it so that's the name of the employee and we are done so we, our name right now is working with the employee I can actually compile it make sure everything works control F7 it compiles testing it's gonna be your responsibility go home test it see if it works or not and for the company what do we do so this is the company put it left and right so we can see it company has a name so I'm gonna do the same thing over here name I'm gonna set it like that and leave it to be empty uh, for company oh and for employee I don't need any constructor uh, or destructor because constructor sets it to an empty thing I don't have a need to have a default constructor because it is being defaulted automatically and by the way uh, one thing I have to mention I did not mention last time about constructors that is when you are creating a constructor if you don't create any constructor the system will create one for you and it becomes a default constructor but if you create any constructor then everything is in your hands so if you want a default constructor you have to create it there won't be an automatic uh, constructor anymore be aware of that anyways in here I don't need a constructor or destructor because everything is defaulted over here name takes care of its own data I don't need to worry about it and higher end display will happen so we are good unless I want to add something for it to later on use it but for now I don't need anything so I'm just gonna leave it like that one thing I may may be nice it may, may be nice to do is to create a constructor that accepts a name but we don't need it because it's not designed that way a business logic doesn't require it so I'm just gonna let it be for here however I I had dynamic memory allocation for workers and the name over there that I had so definitely I'm not I'm I am going to need a constructor so I need a default constructor I need a <coughs> constructor that gets the name of the company exactly like startup so constant character pointer name that's the name of the company that's gonna get received and obviously I need a destructor to make sure that everything is wiped out properly during after execution so now that everything is done like this uh, let's actually go in and start implementing it so uh, constructors destructors and everything want to put it right up here right at the top uh, add the qualification of the company to it create empty bodies and start coding <coughs> so we know that I can start up a company with no name and I can start a company with a name so 
to start a company with no name uh, I think uh, I need to get the name where is the startup over here so startup says get the name and so on and so forth I can do that easy I'm just gonna say over and and in here then it sets it I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna just remove that startup remove that temporary name over here remove the get line and over here simply say M name oh M name needs uh, the name and here I'm gonna need M name all right so in here I'm gonna say M name dot uh, read and that's gonna read the name for me easy breezy exactly how we designed the name we have a read right and when we have read read actually reads the name so that's what I'm going to do and this is wrong the tilde should be beside the name I put it at the wrong place let's save that okay display name displays the name uh, I can just change it uh, and first of all in here it needs to know if the name is empty or not for that name doesn't have anything so I'm gonna add to it uh, the capability so in here I'm gonna actually add a function and I'm gonna call it bull is safe empty state and I'm gonna make it a const that actually tells me if name is empty or not so um, uh, what I will do in my name.cpp where is my there we go so in here what I need to do if the names blank uh, so if first of all if uh, yeah that the, the title could be blank or nothing it doesn't make any difference well, the, 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 the value of the name is the most important one that's the one that dictates if the name the title we are uh, where is the name so the value the value is the one that is important not the title so the value is what I have to check so in here I'm gonna return value not being null and so if it is in safe empty state is value is null PTR or Val m value sorry m value m value zero is not equal to uh, zero so what happens is that if m value is null then it becomes true because it's true the second half will not even be looked at by compiler therefore no error message over there but if the m value is not null it means it's pointing somewhere now let me take a look at the place that is pointing to see if it's empty or not and therefore that is a safe empty state so now I have the condition I can come back to my testing over here and I can say if m uh, name dot is safe empty not if it's not in a safe empty state then I'm gonna display it so I'm gonna say m name dot display easy Other, otherwise we're gonna print no name um, wait a minute I think name does that does it the display of the display of name oh the display of name does it so I don't need to do anything all I need to do is to say m name dot display voila it will do everything by itself so it will check make sure everything's good prints otherwise it says no name so m display name display does it so we're good the startup says enter the name of the company and read so it does it the other startup actually sets the name so um, in here it says if that's not null I want the name to get created sure I'll do it I don't need the second part all I need to do is to name the set the name to a new value so in here I'm gonna say m name is set to name uh, m name dot set and there we go I'm gonna put over here name 
and we're done and it's going to set the number of employee afterwards so that's that <clears throat> and it's very possible that I don't need to sue f if name because set has its own stuff so set the allocates if they are not null it's going to auto copy other than yes yeah, so even I don't need to check the name because the set uh, the name set already does that so even that is not needed even better is I simply say m name dot set to name so that'll take care of everything by itself I don't need to worry about it uh, what else we have what else we have in here that involves them nowhere let me compile control F7 yeah so it compiles um, please test it at home oh for we forgot the <laughs> we forgot the constructor and destructor so when the when it's defaulted it's supposed to actually do a startup with a name right so what we need to do uh, in startup it sets the number of employee and sets the name so um, no it just gets the name that's what it does so in here I'm just gonna call startup so that's what it's going to do the start and and um, and startup needs to set number of employees too so in here I'm going to set number of employees so that's that one so it's called startup and if it's startup with name it's going to be startup with name startup with name so now that we have these two functions we don't need them in um, we don't need them in public domain anymore it just comes out and it's going to be used by our constructors and the destructor over here is going to close down the company um, yeah it's going to close down the company so in here I can simply say close down and take the close down and put it up in here too so no one can close down the company but the company itself so it's going to come over here like that and now you have constructors and destructors and therefore in our main uh, employee main we do not need to start up anything so in here it's going to be removed this is going to be set to Seneca College higher Schmeyer whatever close down is not needed it's gonna wipe everything up automatically by itself <coughs> and save so please double check make sure you run it test it see if everything's okay if not try to debug it and if you couldn't debug it bring it the next day and I will debug it for you so that was a quick review on uh, that was a quick review on constructors and destructors and the things that we've talked about last time uh, and also reusing the classes that we have uh, so our class has an attribute that is actually another compound statement kind of compound uh, um, object uh, so now we know any questions So for the next part of what we have, I am going to create a sample uh, example for you and go through it. And through that sample, we're going to uh, teach something new. Okay. So for that sample, I am going to um, yeah five minutes break let me prepare it I, th I thought of something cool so uh, wait for five minutes I'm gonna pause and come back and uh, we're gonna start the new concept five minutes please I'm recording and also bring this up 
So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to uh, resume recording. I'm going to create a class called containers. Suppose it's just contain something, okay, a, a container, okay? Another container. You can pour something from one container to another, pour something from another container. So that, uh, we want to simulate that. So we want to have a container, okay? It could be any container. It could be a container. It could be a container. Any type of container will do. Or container. These are all containers. So I want to create a container. And, and let's say the container has some kind of a volume, integer and volume. That's have a volume. So it's, uh, yes. No. Your yes. screen is not shared. Oh, my screen is not shared. <laughs> Stupid screen. Why it doesn't know how to? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Are, are, do we have it? Is it shared now? Yes, for the. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, okay. All right. Yes. So, so uh, it's gonna have some kind of volume, so that there's something in it, and obviously it needs some kind of a capacity because that's the maximum number of, uh, the maximum um, amount of thing that I can put in it. So uh, volume and capacity, that's the container. Um, and I, I'm not going to put anything else in it. That's the, that, that's the extent of it. Uh, the, mm, the uh, what should we call it? The, um, uh, volume and capacity. <coughs> and then uh, what do we need to do with this? Let me just split the window in two so we can actually code it as we are going through, going through it. Uh, I need to be able to create a container, so I'm going to create container, and I'm going to say, obviously, a container is going to have a capacity. If they don't mention what the capacity is, let's say by default it's 250 cc's um, and uh, uh, some volume, so uh, some value for the volume, how much we're going to put in there. Uh, I'm going to name that, put that... Um, Let's let's shorten these things so I can actually be quick about it. So <coughs> volume and let's say the volume over here, if they don't mention it, it's going to be zero. It means um, that nothing's going to be there. Um, I know need a destructor because I don't have any dynamic memory to to take take care to take care of. Would be nice if I actually did something like this just in case. So that's my container. Um, I need to be able to set the container to a certain value, pour stuff into it. So I'm going to create a set, and in that set, I'm going to receive a volume, and that volume is going to set the value to whatever it is. And let me just actually do it as I'm going through it, so it's uh, going to be quicker like that. So uh, to set the container, I simply go in volume, and uh, set to uh, volume, and M capacity, set to the capacity that is coming in, and it's going to set it accordingly. And set for volume will almost not there, not there. Set for volume will set the volume, but it's just not going to be a dumb set volume. It has to actually set it properly, which means I need to be able to uh, to make sure that I'm not overflowing the thing. So I have to. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say I'm going to set the volume to the value that is coming in. Obviously, I've got to make sure that somebody not not going to put something negative in here. So if that volume is greater than uh, or maybe equal to zero, maybe what they want to empty it like that. So if they s if first I'm going to set the, the volume to the value, then I'm going to check if now the volume is greater than capacity, then it overflow. I cannot pour uh, like this is 350 five milliliters if I put more it's gonna overflow it's not gonna fit in here so I have to make sure if now the volume became greater than that I have to correct it by setting the volume to the M capacity <coughs> so that is going to actually set uh, the the, uh, the volume of the container are we okay with this <coughs> Just a second, I have a warning over here that I have to take care of. My apologies again.
All right. <coughs> the next thing we need to uh, be able to do is to display the container. See no. how much stuff we have in here. So let's actually do that. To display the container, I'm going to go. Uh, uh, we know how to do it. It's standard. So I'm going to do the standard thing include IO stream. And I'm going to just go through it, say STD, O stream, reference. We already talked about it. Whenever you want to display something, if they don't tell you how, this is how you display it. And then I'm going to put over here STD, O stream, reference, OSDR. And I'm going to set that one by default to be the C out. So that's the display. And let's create it. So for the display, <coughs> for the display, first of all, I need the IO stream, so include IO stream and using namespace std. As you see, uh, I have very short term memory, like many students say. Why you're doing this, you already have included it in the header file. So it's going to be included over here. You know, anyway, I know that. But you should assume that you don't know that. Write each module of the program as if you are just writing it without knowing what you have in here. Be completely independent in your modules and in your files so your program becomes robust and proper. Remember that. Just And remember that every single include file it has a safeguard in it. So nothing wrong is going to happen. Write the header files where you are using them. They are very extremely important. Are we okay down to this point? All right. Now we have done this. Let's display. So how do I display? I'm going to go uh, OSDR. Uh, I'm going to show that it's a container. So I'm going to put CN and uh, open a squared bracket let's say I want to show like how many cc's like 120 uh, if it's 2020 20 liter multiply by 1022 that's uh, six digits we'll make it eight so I'm gonna say width uh, OSDR dot width uh, and set the width to eight so we're gonna put in eight spaces and then after that I am going to display the the volume, so I'm going to say OSDR. Uh, uh, the volume that's going to be this with M volume, and that's going to be right justify. So OSDR dot set F uh, iOS right, and yeah, so that's going to be uh, right justified, and I'm going to leave it at that for now. And uh, again, I'll, I'll do another OSDR, and I'm going to close the bracket to a slash open a bracket uh, so that's that and then I'm gonna put OSDR uh, M capacity uh, that's gonna be in width of 8 too so again um, OSDR with 8 so I'm gonna show OSDR dot capacity um, uh, sorry OSDR M capacity and close it down and let the rest of the stuff be handled by the next output whatever it is and I'm going to say return OSDR and uh, I think we are at the stage that we can actually test this so I'm going to save it uh, save everything I'm going to go to program over here I don't need those things I don't need these things I just need include uh, container. Okay, so I'm going to have container C uh, 220 and 100. And I'm going to say C dot display. And I'm going to say uh, C dot set uh, 200. And see that display and see what happens. Oh, I have to go to new line. New line and new line. And call the program, see what happens. Oh, 
Um, I forgot IO stream. Include IO stream and using namespace std. One more time. And voila. So the first one is 100 out of 220. Now that I added that, I added, I set it to 200, and it becomes 200 out of 220. So that's the the container that I have. Are we okay down to this point? Professor, well, you added IO stream twice. I added. What did I do? You added IO stream twice. Oh, I did. <laughs> Thank you. Not that it matters, but and by the way, many people made the same mistake that you see over here. We're having uh, custom um, custom overloads before uh, library includes. Always these have to be first. Remember that. Extremely important. All right. So. Oh. Uh, you have received um, your marks for workshop, I forgot to mention. Um, and you have the um, uh, this up. Let me just put it over here. So you have uh, these notes from up in marks. So if you go over here, it says summer of 2020 messages. So these you have to review. You're obligated to review these any of these mistakes you make from now on when you submit something no matter what even if it's the first time you're doing it you get penalized for it you have to read this and understand what was the mistake and don't make that mistake extremely important okay are we good with this you should have received uh, an announcement with me and some of you uh, have received uh, feedbacks directly from me through email so uh, probably you know what I'm talking about Anyways, uh, so the next thing I want to be able to do over here is to, uh, to actually uh, add some value to a container. So I want to be able to actually say, for example, add some volume to a container. So how do I do it? Uh, add container. Add integer volume. So how, how do I add it? Uh, I'm going to add it to the value that it already has. So I'm going to reuse my code. I'm not going to write another code over here. So because I have all these validation and stuff that I have done, I want it to be done automatically. So what I will do over here is this. I'm going to say uh, set. Uh, uh, the value of m volume to m volume plus volume so uh, whatever the value that it has it's going to set it to that one if it's extra it's going to overflow it if it's not it's it's going to let it let it as it's let it be so uh, it's going to work properly so now if i say over here c dot add and i put 50 to this one obviously it's going to exceed the size of 220 and if I actually display it, it should actually show me that it's completely full now, as you see. Okay, are we okay with this? Now I may have another. Uh, I may have another container that I want to con add, put some of my. Uh, some of like I literally have one container and I want to get the value out of this one and pour it to the other one so let's do that so I'm gonna say uh, I've, and another thing uh, if you recall I said I hate void let's not put void over here whenever you have void return the reference of the container it is always better to do so so you have cascading capabilities so this is gonna be container container reference and this is going to be container reference. Practice this. If you don't see in, a, in an assignment, it tells you what is it going to return. Um, always return the reference of the current thing. And even if they, if they tell you it returns void, return the container. It doesn't matter. Return this. It's not going to make any difference. 
the uh, the outcome is going to be the same so contain container reference and now in here I'm going to say return this okay so now if I go back over here and now now I want to actually add uh, the content of one container to another by the way uh, I have a mistake in the code in here right now can anybody tell me what is my mistake in this code it runs perfectly as you see but if you hand this program to me uh, you lose mark why I'm um, because you don't have the container just empty parenthesis right below the public because I don't have what you don't have the um I forgot the name of it, but like container just. Destructor, you mean? Yeah, I uh, know. Constructor. Constructor, I do. Here's the constructor. Oh. So I do have the constructor. Same name, you see? So, so I get to say it? No. No, Armando, I want people to get bonus marks. You don't say anything. You're a guest. <laughs> but people, go ahead. You're going to get marks for your midterm. You don't want marks for your midterm? You know what? I'm going to freeze the screen. Okay. And I'm going to publish uh, a poll and see who can actually answer what is wrong with this. Okay. So I'm going to actually say over here, lose a response. I'm going to say, what is wrong with this code? And the lecture for what is wrong in this code was done last day. So last time that you were here, we actually talked about this, these things, and we explained what is wrong and what is not. So please respond. I'm going to be quiet. I'll give you five minutes. Please think and respond to the poll and let me know. Five minutes is 3.11, 3.16. We're going to continue. I want you to tell me what is wrong with this code. Armando, you can respond too to the poll because no one else can see, right? So you can do it too, just just for practice. All right, good. I just I was gonna answer, but then I realized I was wrong, so I'm thinking. I'm gonna go pour myself a coffee and come back.
All right, time's up. <coughs> so that I just mentioned what it is. That's not the one. Somebody mentioned this one. Let me just put that one. That's not the. Oops. So that's not the one. Uh, let's see the answer. It says missing destructor. No, we said because it's not dynamic, it doesn't need destructor. Um, no constructor created. Destructor, yada, 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 the value. One person answered correctly. Number six, that is correct. And that person got got five percent for the midterm. I think it was Harshmi. Uh, who was it? I think it was um, Hashmi, professor. It was you, right, Hashmi? Yes, professor. Yeah. Okay. So you already got five percent for the test before, right? You didn't. This is the first time. Uh, thank you so much, professor, for that. <laughs> this, this is the first one. This is the first one. You're yes. Doing? Okay, so yes. remember the bonus marks that we have. You have to remind me to add the thing. I added bonus marks to your the, the grade center, if you see that. Um, uh, anyone else over here received? Uh, um, uh, anyone here received uh, uh, a bonus mark from me? Anyone? How can I uh, check that if I've already received it? No, no. <laughs> Sebastian, like, did I tell you that if, that I that you have a bonus mark? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, on the on the IPC review. Uh, on the IPC review, but perfect. Like, how much did you get? I'm not sure. I have to watch the replay. <laughs> watch um, the replay and let me know, because uh, bonus marks are set in the like in your grade center, right? Um, I also said that. Um, I think it was like May 26th. No, no, it, the, the the date is not important. You have to tell me how much you got. Oh, I'm just gonna double check it and. Like, yeah, double yeah, check those things yeah, and yeah. let me know. Uh, I'm right. trying to find Hashmeet. Where is your name? I cannot find you. Hmm, sort of scenting. So yeah, and and when you get it, you get it. You cannot get it again. Okay, so next time, not that you cannot, you cannot get it this much. So, so I add over here. I'm gonna say for midterm. I'm gonna call it MT, so I know. Uh, it's added to midterm. There you go. Hmm. It, there we go. It added. So when you look at it, you're going to see the, the bonus marks over there. Anyway, so problem was this. Yes, I said that always you have to look for your business logic. See if there is a function whose job, whose action dictates. Oh. Yeah, whose action dictates that is not supposed to change the content of the owner. You have to always make it a const. So we have to have a const over here and a const over here to make sure this does not change the owner. Are we okay with this? Oh, 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 oh wait, 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 So are we okay with this? All right, so that's that. Remember that it's very important. So, uh, so um, the next thing I want to do is to add one container to another. So I'm going to have over here container uh, per, uh, reference, and I'm going to say add. But this time I'm going to get another container. The reason I'm not making this container over here a constant is that. The action of adding, like if this was number, I wouldn't do this. I would make this one a const over here. But because we want to do an object-oriented thing, an object-oriented stuff, when you actually add something to another, it removes from the content of one and adds to the other one. So therefore, the arguments con uh, content should change after the value of C is added to this. So uh, that's what I'm doing. So. Um, in here I am going to actually write that so in here I'm going to say first of all I have to make sure that uh, 
uh, I am adding this stuff correctly so in here I have to say um, if uh, the capacity uh, that I have minus the volume which means th the amount of empty space I have this this in this container if capacity minus uh, volume is greater than or equal to the containers uh, volume oh I don't have anything to get the volume from I could get the volume here like this I don't want to do that I need to have an accessor for it in case I need to have I if, 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 if in case I need to get the volume so I'm going to create these two things I'm going to say uh, integer volume const now this one has to be const because it's not supposed to change an integer capacity const this these are not supposed to uh, change so in here volume I'm just going to return the volume easy breezy and and the next one uh, is the capacity so I'll add that one too and that's going to return the capacity okay so now I'll save that I'll go back to what I was doing now in here instead of saying C volume I'm going to say C volume which is going to return the volume the uh, outcome is the same but this one if I have to do some um, validation or something in volume it's going to affect everywhere so I don't have to worry about it anymore now in here I'm going to say otherwise so that's that then I'll come over here so how do I set this I'm going to say set exactly like the other one m volume of me uh, plus whatever volume that I have plus the volume that I'm receiving from the other one so I'm going to set the value of me to the volume of me plus the volume of the other one and because I just poured all the volume out of that one in here I have to set the volume of the other one to zero to make sure that it's empty because I just poured everything out of it so this becomes empty everything it has comes to my container but if that one is has something in it and I have something in myself and when this thing is actually pouring in here it's gonna fit it before it's empty then I have to make sure that the value that is being set is set properly which means if that's not the case I'm going to I'm gonna say first um, obviously if the value that I have over here if the space that I have over here is actually uh, smaller than the volume that I'm receiving from here then my container is going to get filled it's going to be completely full so I'm going to say if that's the case volume will be M capacity but how much of the other one is emptied that I have to set so I have to say the container that is coming in set its value to uh, to the volume of that container the volume of that container minus capacity of mine minus volume of mine so essentially it, it says okay this is my capacity this is my volume the amount that you see over here is the amount that I want to take out of the container therefore set the amount of the container to the difference of, of the two it means I'm gonna pour this much out and the rest remains in it and therefore my container becomes full and then I'm gonna say return this so as you see these are all it looks like addition but lots of stuff are happening behind the scene because I'm just simulating a container over here now therefore in here if I actually now uh, do something like this if I have say uh, container D that has 300 cc's uh, capacity and it already has 200 in it 
<clears throat> and in here I'm gonna say uh, D dot display and I'm gonna display D so I know that's D and I'm gonna come over here and put this one as C so we know this is C and let me put D over here and go to new line with some lines so I can see what I'm doing separate it because it's becoming more complicated I want to be able to track it so now I'm going to copy this and paste it over here and so every time every time I'm gonna show both of them okay and now in here I'm gonna say uh, D dot add and I'm gonna add whatever I have in C in here into D and display them both okay now if I actually go through them step by step we will see if everything is working properly now let's do it like this now let's put this one at left and this one at right and remove that. So I have two containers, 100 uh, uh, in 20, 20, 220, this one 200 in, th in 300. I, I add 200 to C and as you see C is 200 out of 2020 and this one is the same. Now I add 50 and obviously when I add 50 the other one gets completely full now I'm gonna say empty out of that full into this one this one has only 100 left empty and the other one has 220 so if it works properly after it's done the top one should be 110 and the bottom will be 300 after adding and we do that and that's exactly what happens so I have a good working container over here that is kinda of doing what I want are we okay down to this point All right, now that I've done this, what if I have two containers and I want to add them into one container and I put them in the container? What, like I have two things and I want to take the stuff out of this two and put it in this one. What can I do? How do I do that? Uh, for that, because now I have two separate containers dealing with uh, and I want to get the two and, and make another one. If something like that happens, it's always, um, not, not always, but uh, it seems more logical if I actually uh, have uh, a separate helper function we call that helps me doing that by, by creating a container for me. It's not a reference anymore. And it's going to be sum of two containers. So, so I'm going to call it over here container left and container right now so I want to essentially build a container that has the capacity of both and the volume of both um, I can make these consts because I don't want to change them but again it all depends on business logic if you want to empty them you can do the same we can do that too uh, so we can assume that we are building a bigger container and we are emptying these two. That is fine too. Let's let's actually do that. So we are actually emptying these two. And prob probably from what you're hearing from background, my daughter is home and she's very loud. Let me go close the door. Give me two seconds. I'm sorry. All right, so let's write the sum over here. So in here, what I'm going to do will be this. So I'm going to have a container, obviously. So in this sum, I'm going to create a container. So container um, uh, return. That's what I'm going to return. The capacity of the container is going to be left dot capacity plus uh, plus right dot capacity
and the volume inside that container is going to be left dot volume plus right dot volume and after this is done right will be set to empty there is nothing will be left over here right will be empty there is nothing left in there and left will be empty too and at the end that uh, container that was newly built will be returned so now I have the two containers uh, pouring into a new container that has the size of both together and if I actually come over here and create a container uh, in here Uh, in here I'm gonna create uh, container A and in here I'm gonna say A is equal to sum of C and D and uh, I'm gonna say A dot display actually let's do this So that's going to be D, that's going to be A, I'm going to put over here D, and I'm going to put in over here A, and then I will run this, and here's what I'm going to have. There you go. So it's a total of 520, and it has 420 cc's in it, and those two containers are now empty. Are we okay with this? So, to continue, we need to kind of go back to kindergarten, not kindergarten, primary school, and take a look at what we learned when we were actually doing the regular uh, addition and subtraction and stuff like that, and to kind of understand how, how they work. So, I'm going to add a new item in here. I'm going to make it a text file. kind of see what types of operators I have had okay the first type of operator is the operator that you always used so uh, so you have something like a plus B when you have an operator like this this operator has what we call two operands this is one operand and this is another so this type of operator has a left operand operand then you have an operator and then you have a right operand okay so a plus b c minus d 2 plus 2 multiply by 4 or c out hello so these are all operators in that manner you have late left operand you have operand uh, operator right operand left operand operator right operand left operand operator right operand left operand operator and right operand do we understand this now these are standard what we call binary operators okay so these are standard binary operators binary operators now these binary operators could be like this too okay a plus equal B and C D and so on and so forth Th what makes a difference between this operator and this operator is that after this operator is done C and D remain the same okay nothing is changed over here but in here B remains the same but A changes. Okay? These type of operators, I call them operators with side effect. Why I call them side effect? Because they change, they change their side operand. When you have plus equal, the left operand changes. When you have this, the left operand doesn't change. 
when you have C out at left and hello, the left operand changes because you're actually printing on it, it comes on a screen. Of course, the right operand in this case doesn't change. So these are binary operators that we have, and all the binary operators with our knowledge, they always return a value. You can always say foo a plus equal b, which means plus equal is going to do what it's supposed to do to a and b, and it returns a value that goes to foo. You can always say over here c uh, C, uh, sorry, foo is C minus D, which essentially means you know that this minus is going to do what it's supposed to do on C and D and returns the value and goes to foo. And you can always say over here something like display C out hello, which essentially means it's going to print the hello on the C out and the, then this operator returns the C out that is passed to display and so on and so forth so everything works that way. Are we okay with this? So these are binary operators and then we have unary operators. Now unary operators the way we learned it in arithmetic they don't have side effect they just return something. Now, even this we don't have in arithmetic. In all the operators that we have in arithmetic, they don't change the content of the uh, the side. If you want to do that, you actually have to write the thing. So instead of writing a plus equal b in arithmetic, you actually have to write you actually have to write a is set to a plus b. That that. So this becomes an arithmetical operation, and then it's going to be assigned to A, and then goes back to computer science. Are we okay with this? We have, but with unary operators, you know exactly what they are. It's like minus 2 plus B, uh, not A, um, plus plus I something like that. So these are all unary operators and unary operators come in form of operand 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 and the operator coming afterwards and they work exactly the same way they, they extract the value of their operand they do something and return it so you can actually say foo minus one minus two or you can say over here foo plus plus i. So it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, but only in C and C++ we have an unusual type of operand that is a postfix operand which essentially means and there are only two of them the, and that is J++ plus plus and X minus minus that can come after which go to the form of oh sorry That's operator operand. This one is operand oper and then operator. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, operand operator. So this actually, this these are these these we call these regular regular unary operators. We call them prefix operators because they come before, and these we call postfix. And they are only these two postfix operators. So the only postfix operators we have in C and C++ are plus plus and minus minus. No other operator can come after. Are we okay with this? Now, going back, going back to what we talked about in containers, when you are looking at over here, when you are saying C set to 200, when you say something like this, do, doesn't it look like this as you are saying C set to 100? When you are saying C add 50, doesn't it look like as if you are saying C plus equal 50? 
when you are saying d at c doesn't it look like as you're showing you're saying d plus equal c and when you are saying a is sum of c plus d doesn't it look like like a is set to c plus d do we understand what i said they do look that way right okay so now now that we know what they look like let's save these things so in here i'm going to say and i'm going to call these a functional container dot cp dot header file so this is the functional version of it and i'm going to have this one saved as, as the same thing so that's going to be uh, a functional container but this one's going to be cpp okay now let's open the original ones and just take a look and i want your undivided attention on this are you guys with me everybody's here take a look at this i am not going to do anything over here other than just changing the name of the functions i am not touching anything i'm not coding i'm just renaming functions do we understand i just want to rename functions do we understand this okay i'm gonna rename set to operator assignment i'm gonna rename add to operator operator plus equal I'm going to rename this add again to op if I can type it properly operator plus equal and I'm going to come over here and rename this sum to operator plus between the two okay simple and straightforward so I just rename these and I'm going to go over there in the other one and I'm going to rename the same thing so this set is operator assignment this add is operator plus equal this add is operator plus equal and this add right at the bottom is operator plus come on you can do it why it's not huh oh it doesn't have set oh, okay now the sets that i have over here i'm gonna uh, rename this one too so that is operator equal and this one is operator equal so as you see everything is just renamed i'm going to come to this program in this set i'm going to say operator equal in here i'm going to say operator plus equal in here i'm going to say operator plus equal and in here I'm gonna say operator plus do we understand this so I just renamed it and if I recompile the whole thing see what happens uh oh where is that set I have some sets that I did not change so this set is operator equal this set is operator equal this set is operator equal again operator equal operator equal what else do i have let me compile there we go as you see it's running exactly the same way nothing has changed i only renamed functions so take a look in here it says call c dot operator equal and it comes over here it calls operator equal then it says display c dot operator plus equal now i'm going to come over here operator plus equal now in here i'm going to say operator plus equal c it's going to go operator plus equal c and so on and so forth do we understand this That's it. So you just learned operator overloading.
Now take a look at this. If I actually come back over here, I'm just going to comment this and bring this one back. Comment this and bring this one out. Comment this and bring this one out. Comment this and bring this one out. If I run the program, you'll see it works ex exactly the same way. So if I run the program, it comes over here and it comes right down and it says, I have an assignment operator. My assignment operator is for doubles and integers and stuff. I've never seen a container at left and an integer at right. Let me see if container has an operator equal. Oh, it does. I'm going to run that one. So it goes to operator equal. Then it comes over here. Plus equal is for doubles and ints and stuff like that. I don't have it. Does, com does container have a plus equal that accepts an integer? Yes, it does. It runs that one. And as you see, these become operator overloads. And again, it comes over here and says, I have a plus, a plus operator which has a C at left, a container at left, and a container at right. Do I have, a do I have an operator plus inside C? It goes in here. There is no operator plus inside C. Do I have an operator that accepts a standalone helper operator that, that accepts a left and the right container? Yes, I do. So it's going to so it's going to call that one and run it like that. And as you see, it works perfectly and I just did operator overloading so now your code looks like as if operator plus equal actually has a meaning and in fact it has a meaning you gave that meaning to it to compiler because it's a new action for the same operator we call it overloading which means plus equal didn't know how to do container and int I explained it now it knows it, it can pick up the right one because it's overloaded. Do we understand it? And also, take a look at this, for example. In here, I, if I wanted this to happen, you see in here I'm saying C display, yada, 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 okay? Now, if I wanted it to happen like this, if I wanted, instead of saying C display, C yada yada, if I wanted to say C out, C, and then put the C over here, or do this, if I wanted to do this, what would happen? If I want the operator, at, you have already done it over here, let me just bring it down here so you can actually see. So if I want to show the C over here, instead of writing a function, if I want it to happen like C out C, and I go and L. For this operator, what should be the left-hand side operands type? What should be the left-hand side's operands type? What should be the left-hand side's operands type? What is the type of this object? Left, people are left, not right, left. Sebastian, it's not OSTR, it's O stream. C out is of type O stream. So the left hand side operand is O stream. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, uh, and Hashmeet, can you turn on your microphone? Yes, Professor. You know, this is left, right? Yes. Is this a container? Uh, no, what that's is my not. That's O um, stream. Yes. Okay, now tell me, what is that right-hand side of this operator? That is a container. That is a container. So, at right side, I have O stream. At left side, I have container. So, what I can do over here is say operator, <clears throat> like that. At left side, I put O stream, reference OSTR. At right side, I want to show a container. 
Hash, uh, uh, Hashmeet, should, yes, should C change when it gets printed? No. No. So I'm going to put constant container reference right operand. Okay? Yes. So this one is going to be left operand. That's going to be right operand. And what should this return so and L can get printed? What should the operator, this operator, return? What should replace here so and L can get printed? Perfect. Somebody said O stream reference, and I'm going to take it. So it's O stream, yes. So what it should return is O stream reference. So I'm just going to get this and put it right in a header file, exactly what we have written. I'm going to come to the header file, go right over here and create another uh, helper. So it's stdo stream returns, stdo stream left operand, and it's going to be a container that is going to print. So I'm going to take this and implement it. So I'm going to come to my CPP file. That's yet another helper program that I'm going to write. And in here, I'm going to say, OK, I want to print the right operand. So I'm going to say write, write operand dot display. Remember, I told you when you are writing display, what should it receive? Now you know why. In here, you're going to say left operand. And remember, I told you what it should return. So in here, you simply say return. Done. This should be engraved in your memory. It is the standard way you overload C in and C out. By doing something like this, my container is now printable with C out because essentially it calls the display that you did manually so many times. So instead of writing something like that, I can actually write over here something like C out, C, and I'm going to go C and L. C out, D, and I'm going to print D and go to new line, and I go C out, A, to just show A, and I go A, and I go and L, uh, not and L, I'm going to put, put the other stuff over here. <clears throat> so by writing, by writing something like this, when I get to this point of execution, what happens is that <clears throat> compiler first print these two. The outcome of these two is C out. So at left, I have C out. At right, I have container. What happens? It goes in here. Left becomes C out. Right becomes container. It goes over here, calls the display for container, then comes back up and prints everything and, and therefore it is printed. You see that? That C thing, yeah, I should remove it. And so the next one and the next one, and they are now printed with C out. So therefore, that's how you can simply um, uh, overload your operators so they can actually, uh, helper operators, so they can actually print objects as if they are part of C++ language and you can print it at any time. This was an introduction to uh, operator overloading. Um, and now you know. So you can change all these things to actually work uh, with C out instead. So <clears throat> instead of writing those things, what I can do is this. So the code that I have written will be changed to this one now. And as you see now, we have a pure C++ application running over here without, like if you actually show this to a rookie person that just learned C++, they think that these are just regular variables of C because as you see, you are just writing C++ code and nothing extraordinary is happening here. But they don't know that behind the scene, you program C++ to recognize what all these things are. Are we okay with this?
Now as practice, as practice, make name printable. You already have the display set for it properly. You already have the read for it properly. Set this set name to be displayed and read with CN and C out instead of calling the functions. Make employee to get printable and, and readable. So fix this awful display and make it O stream the way they were supposed it, it is supposed to. And make these things to work with CN and C out. And so the so the uh, employees so list employees that you have over here this should return o stream and receive o stream and then you can call it in c out so when you say c out company it lists the company as a whole do we understand this that's your practice and go and do it that's going to be your practice for uh, operator overloading sorry you you meant for this one um just make it all stream make it readable through all stream yeah just, uh, so because, so in here i i want in my where is it so let me just bring my company main <clears throat> i want the company main to work like this you shouldn't write stuff c dot higher instead mm -hmm. of that you should go c in c and then c out c and see out expand um, do it this so this actually you just still don't know I didn't just uh, t teach binary operators yet but forget about expand uh, but you can just list uh, all the list and higher can be actually be changed to see in and see out I'm gonna comment this so you know what I'm talking about okay so do it that way anyways uh, in one minute your quiz starts uh, any questions in this two seconds right now Yilu Yilu can you activate your microphone yeah, yeah I'm here um, uh, did you register late in my uh, class uh, yeah Oh, so uh, that's why your uh, your workshops are not marked. I just noticed that your uh, that your workshops are all over the place. <laughs> they are not filtered properly. So I'll filter it and I'm going to mark it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And if anybody else did not receive marks from th that they submitted, please forward me their confirmation later, and I'm going to confirmation email and I'm going to take care of it. Nishit. Nishit, you have a question? Yes, sir. Go ahead. It was a mix, mis 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 mislike. Okay, so bye bye everyone. Start doing your quiz. I'll talk to you later. I am turning off the microphone. I'll be here till six till four ten. Thank you for that. No problem. See you guys later.